Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our presentation today. We'll, while we will be taking a look at Verizon and their potential entry into markets in the United Kingdom, my name is Lucas Elliott. I'm Devin Davidson. Christopher Williams. And I'm Adrian Williams. And without further ado, let's go ahead and just dive right in. So the first thing that we want to look at is the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is home to a constitutional monarchy, which has a figurehead leader of the Queen, but is actually led by the Prime Minister and the Parliament, which is similar to the United States Congress. The hot issue right now in the UK is Brexit. Brexit is basically the UK getting ready to leave the EU. And while they have passed this among their own citizens, they've not been able to come up with an official implementation plan um, to officially leave the EU. This has led to a little bit of political instability as Theresa May, the former Prime Minister, stepped down after three failed attempts to pass a resolution, she was replaced by Boris Johnson. Now, it is also worth mentioning that Verizon is currently in the UK. They have one corporate office in Reading. And at that office, they employ approximately 1,100 people and offer the Verizon Telematics service, which has to do with data analytics and fleet automation for big business and for vehicle fleets in those businesses. At this current time, as of 11 24, 2019, the conversion rate is one British pound being worth $1.28 of American money. So one pound equals 1.28 United States dollars. As we take a look at Verizon, the thing that we want to mention about Verizon is that they were founded in 1983 and they're an American based company currently headed by Hans Vestberg. He oversees approximately 136,000 employees that are located all around the globe, mostly in the United States. In 2018, Verizon brought in approximately $131 billion in revenue. And at the end of that year, they paid out $9.8 billion of those dollars to their shareholders through dividends. So in order to gauge how well Verizon could do in the UK market, we have to take a look at the, its competitors. So we have the top three cell phone carriers in the UK. We have O2, we have EE Limited, and we have Vodafone. So first we're going to take a look at EE Limited, whose product is available to over 90% of the UK population. They offer 4G in more areas than any of their competitors. And of the three companies that we have listed, they are the cheapest. They have the cheapest price per month at five pounds, which if you translate it to uh, the dollar, it would be $6.43. In order for Verizon to compete with EE Limited, they will have to look at EE's poor customer support. They received multiple uh, complaints from people. They have a uh, poor technical support and also people are, are unhappy with uh, the cell phone plans. Every one of EE's plans uh, is set at 24 months and they're, they're very long contracts and sometimes they can be hard to get out of. So for, for, for Verizon to compete with them, they would have to offer better customer service, better technical support and also shorter contracts and or contracts that are easier to get out of. Second, we have uh, O2, which is a very big innovator. They've incorporated financial services with uh, mobile phones. They've enabled their users to use digital currency instead of uh, physical money. They're also very energy efficient. They use uh, renewable energy to cut costs and they've also, they've also decreased transportation costs to increase profitability. In order for Verizon to compete with them, they would um, have to look at O2's uh, lack of lack of success outside of their core business. So what they would do is they would have to offer some type of streaming service or anything outside the realm of uh, telecommunication. And lastly, we have Vodafone, which uh, has a very big emphasis on convenience. They have a wide range of services, including call, text messages, uh, and data access in home and also outside of the, uh, outside of the country. If Verizon wanted to uh, compete with them, they would have to look at their loss of customers in Europe. They're losing customers due to the uh, very fierce competition. And if Verizon wanted to compete with Vodafone, they would have to market in uh, the more rural areas of the UK, areas in Wales and areas in Hampshire in order to capture uh, some of the market that uh, Vodafone has uh, overlooked. So now that we've taken a look at the market in the UK, we'll take a look at Verizon's internal market and the external environment just to see if it's feasible for us to enter that UK market. So uh, Verizon's biggest strength is the reliability of its network, and that's accomplished through the 5G. 
capabilities. So Verizon and the NFL have just recently partnered to bring 5G ultra wideband technology to 13 NFL stadiums in the United States. So fans in these specific uh, seating areas and concourses can have that 5G uh, ultra wideband experience. So um, Verizon does plan to roll out that 5G capability to 30 U.S. cities by the end of this year. So when we talk about weaknesses of Verizon, the Verizon's biggest weakness is it, the high cost of its infrastructure. So bringing that 5G capability to those U.S. cities requires a lot of development and maintenance. So in turn, the the cost of the infrastructure is a quality that Verizon has that most other companies do not have, but it's also one of their biggest weaknesses. Uh, opportunities for Verizon lies in the external environment. So the U.S. smartphone market is currently being oversaturated. Penetration hit 85% in 2018, and that's up from 82% in 2017 and 77% in 2016, meaning that there aren't many new cell phone consumers going out to buy smartphones. So as such, the pool for new mobile customers is shrinking, leading carriers to see new ways to lure new customers away from their competitors. So that, that gives a, a pretty good opportunity for Verizon to enter that UK market to seek new customers. So threats for um, Verizon, the, the largest threat for Verizon is the, the recent T-Mobile acquisition of Sprint. So the T-Mobile, the fourth largest U.S. cell phone provider, is in the process of acquiring Sprint, who is the third largest U.S. cell phone provider. The acquisition has faced scrutiny because of antitrust concerns. It's a $26 billion merger. It would create the third largest cell phone provider in the United States, and it would consume more than 127 million customers. The deal was approved by the U.S. Justice Department in July of 2019, and it was approved by the FCC in October of 2019. It's still pending scheduling a multi-state lawsuit, which is scheduled to go to trial in December of 2019. With integration, we believe that Verizon had an opportunity to penetrate the UK market um, through investing in the previously discussed Vitaphone investment they had a few years back. With that investment, it was to develop a mobile payment service. Also, we believe that with Verizon technology, Verizon can invest in the cellular infrastructure of the UK by offering its 5G and 4G capabilities, as well as the Wi-Fi and the hardwire slash fiber optic capability that Verizon is known for within the U.S. Um, Verizon can also offer its products, the U.S. products, the Apple products, to the U.K. market. Um, Verizon is known for their cell phone technology, meaning the way they multiplex, the way your car is being sent from user to user. Uh, with AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint, they'll use a multiplexing called time division multiplexing, which each time slot, each user is assigned a different time slot, and sometimes users share the same time slot. That's why we sometimes get uh, drop calls or missed calls because the oversaturation of these time slots. With code division multiplexing, which Verizon use, each user get assigned a different code. And that assignment of that code allowed for the proper or the speedy transmission of each call. And this also means that Verizon's infrastructure costs more. So in looking at how Verizon can be successful in the UK market, there's a few things that we wanted to look at. Um, but after looking, we kind of came to the same conclusion as a group. Um, so the first thing we want to touch on is that we believe that Despite um, you know the opportunities that there is with EE and with Vodafone, we think that O2, a 50-50 joint venture with O2 would really be the best way um, to accomplish a Verizon entrance into the market of the United Kingdom. Um, now, this equity-based alliance, like I mentioned, would be 50-50, um, giving O2 the power to control their own destiny as well as their own decisions. 
as well as Verizon to be able to do the same. Um, however, as we all know, in a joint venture, it is joint. So both sides will still have a say in what's going on and what's going to be the best outcome um, for the company. The next thing we wanted to look at, um, Devin's actually going to give us some insights on, and that pertains um, to previous relationships in the UK uh, involving Verizon. So we can't deny that Vodafone and uh, Verizon have a, a relationship with each other in the past. In the past, Vodafone owned 45% of Verizon's shares, but Verizon bought those shares back from Vodafone. So we figured that the relations would be easier if we went with O2. Not only that, but uh, a former uh, O2 CEO, the, the, C, the former CEO of O2, Ronan Dunn, has now become an exec in Verizon. So the importance of that um, obviously cannot be understated. That is a great avenue for us to be in communications with O2 and begin a relationship with them. Um, seeing that Ronan Dunn left O2 on good terms um, after a failed merger. Um, but the next thing that we're going to face is going to be liability of foreignness. So Adrian, tell us a little bit about liability of foreignness so, and what that may do to us. So when, we, so when you talk liability of foreignness, that's when you enter business into a, a foreign market and you not really know, you don't understand what the culture is and what the consumers prefer in that market. So by entering this joint venture with O2, O2 would give us that expertise in the market because they're already a player in that market. And we wouldn't, Verizon wouldn't have to worry about what the consumers want or how to operate in that market because they could just rely upon O2 for all of that expertise. Absolutely. So the last thing that we kind of want to touch on um, is going to be an expansion plan for Verizon and O2 after this joint venture has begun. Um, and Chris is actually going to highlight that for us and give us some more information. Um, so, Chris, tell us what we would do um, if we were to Verizon were a part of O2. What would we want to do to expand that? Um, for Verizon, we want to help O2 expand their 5G capabilities. With Verizon, we are all, already in partnership with uh, over 13 NFL teams in the U.S. Well, we see that the U.K. soccer or football, that's an opportunity to partner with those stadiums, too, to help uh, spread out or uh, expand the 5G capabilities, capabilities within that uh, market and also go into partnership with the most popular sport in the world, which is football. Absolutely. And so the reason that we say football is because as foreign entities, the liability of foreignness is that we may not realize that in Europe, they don't call it soccer, they call it football. So partnering with these football stadiums not only would enable us to give our users, uh, give the O2 users better 5G capability, um, but the main reason that we want to piggyback with O2 is because they are one of the only 5G capable cellular providers in the UK right now. Um, providing it to approximately 13 different cities and hoping to expand that to close to 30 different cities at the end of 2020. Um, so with all those things considered, you know, a 50-50 joint venture, would we all agree that's probably yes. going to be the best scenario. So that 50-50 joint venture where we can expand the 5G capabilities of O2, as well as partner with the Premier League and these football stadiums in the UK, um, we think that those would be some great um, beginning steps uh, to Verizon's presence in the cellular market in the UK. And um, we really think that that would lead to uh, their future success as they glow, glow, grow globally, not only in brand, um, but in size and in use. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and end this presentation. We really want to thank you for uh, the time that you put in to be here and watch, and we hope that you've enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank God you. bless. Thank you.